Ottawa, Ontario is Canada's nation's capital, but it's also covered in goose shit half the year. Thanks to climate change, more snowless months means more time eating grass, which led to an explosion in population for Canada's national bird and, well, goose shit. Their prodigious poop has led to dangerously high E. coli levels on public beaches, but Steve Wombalt, an ex-tech industry type, designed his very own hexicopter system that dive bombs geese day in and day out. As we're walking around, you will see enormous amounts of goose poop, even when we're sitting here. I mean, there's, there's goose poop all over the place. You've probably already walked in it, if you look at the bottom of your shoes, and I can see your reaction. You don't like it. You got it here, 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 here. It's all over. I mean, you can't, every spot I'm pointing to is goose poop. You can't go eight inches without finding goose poop on the beach. It's about a kilogram per day per goose. So two pounds. So, you know, pound of butter times two per one goose. Look how many geese are there. So what our objective is, is to retrain the geese so that they don't land on the beach and don't poop on the beach and just making it all, all around a healthier uh, place for them. The problem with poop is if you poop right in the water on the water's edge, it's actually worse than pooping on the sand. When they poop on the sand, you have chunks. Sounds kind of gross, but you have chunks. And then when the city comes by with their equipment, it's very easy to pick up. When you have geese sitting in the water, they poop in the water and that kind of liquefies. And you can walk up and look at the sand and you'll see the sand. You don't see poop on it, but you see dark spots. Well, that dark, that dark spot is taking that little piece of poop and it's kind of spread it out. So it makes it a lot worse. So to me, if you're gonna scare geese off a of property, you need to do it right. You can't do it, you can't do it like a half-ass job. You can't just scare them into the water. It's kind of more what the drone looks like out of the box sort of thing. And then what I've done is I've modified it. So, you know, the speakers, the extra batteries, the lights. What we've got on order right now is a 3D printer. Um, it has the capability of actually printing carbon fiber. And what we're doing now is this has all been designed in AutoCAD. We're almost done the design. When we get the printer in, we'll be able to snap it all together and then we'll go put on motors and electronics. And that's our drone. It initially came about with me wanting to take aerial video with my drone and a camera. So living in Ottawa, I got the idea I'd go to my local councillor to see if I could solicit them. And when I was sitting with Councillor Manette, who's my local councillor here, uh, he'd come up with the idea of using the drone to chase geese instead of doing aerial photography. And I thought the idea was absolutely ridiculous. I didn't think in a million years I'd ever get a permit for it or they would allow it. Other systems aren't quite as good because you can't get them right out of the water. They just sort of leave a little bit until the threat's gone and that's it. You have sound systems and they're like a, a, a pole that you stick in the ground with a sensor on it. So as the geese come in and fly over that, the, uh, it makes a sound and scares them off. But they learn where that is. You have uh, predator birds. They're limited in that you as a person can't control the flight path of that bird that you're chasing them with. This, I've got all of those systems, every single system out there now, I have put into that. I have this sound generator on the front where it creates pitches and tones. They're taking some of those pitches and tones and I've come down here and sat behind a tree with a tone generator and played these high pitched tones and marked the ones that they most are reactive to. And I've taken those and I've blended them into predator sounds. So I've actually got my own custom mix on here as well. You hear that? So what's that right there? That's a bald eagle. This is a hawk. <laughs> the hunting season is, is so limited and short. So there's only a certain period of time. Like you can't hunt them right now. So what, they're, what are they doing? They're nesting and they're reproducing. So whether it's, whether it's green space or not, uh, left unchecked, they're gonna continue multiplying. It's like you driving down to that rest stop and your convoy of trucks that we're driving down are supposed to stop at a certain McDonald's, but you see that they're at the Burger King a kilometer down the street, human behavior, you're probably gonna go and join them. It's the same thing the birds do. You scare them off this property, as long as they get to a location where they're not being bothered and there's a food supply, they'll stay. And the other ones will just follow them. That's why the system works. I have a three year contract now with Ottawa. What's become of that is the city of Gatineau has contacted me. 
Um, I get calls from all over North America, uh, you know, New York, Connecticut, um, Saskatchewan, British Columbia. Ready? It's, it's fun, it's fun, but again, when you're doing that every day, yeah. the, the hobby side goes away and it now truly becomes a job. Because every single day you got hands on, you're working with it. Uh, you know, you're up until two in the morning making sure your batteries are charged, all your equipment is run. Um, our days start at sunrise. So you want to get everything ready the night before, you don't want to get up at three o'clock in the morning and getting all your... That's just... That's just wind power. That was scary. Yeah, that's just wind power doing that. That's, wow. Isn't that what we need, eh?